Let the blessings come from the north, from the south, the east and the west. We have overcome by the words of our mouth. We have victory, yeah, let the blessings come. Emmanuel, you are our God and Father. You are the one with us. I don't know what your own problem is. Yours could be that you look happy on the outside. We were but your Let us all say to God, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh, Lord. Do something tangible in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Something reasonable in my life. Oh, Lord. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh Lord, do something tangible in my life. Something reasonable in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh Tangible in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something tangible in my life. Something reasonable in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something new in my life Something wonderful in my life Oh Lord Do something tangible in my life Something reasonable in my life Something wonderful in my life Oh Lord Wonderful in my life, something tangible in my life, 
Oh Lord, do something new in my life, something tangible in my life, something reasonable in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life, something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something tangible in my life. Something new in my life. Oh Lord. sentence says understanding is a gateway to wealth success good health lifting and promotion therefore I'm going to ask you to ask the Holy Spirit to grant you revelational knowledge Jesus said to Peter it is not flesh and blood that taught you what you have just said but the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the interpreter positioned by God to interpret to you the word of God and the things you will hear. You also need to have what I call prophetic revelational knowledge. And number three, you need to have what I call an insightful knowledge of the word of God. Understanding determines what you take out of this service tonight. Some people will go from here to a life of greatness. Others will go from here to a life of good health. Others will go from here to be the main men of their families. It is determined by the revelational knowledge, the prophetic knowledge, the insightful knowledge God will grant you this night. The summary of what I will share tonight and teach tonight is that the key that leads to the Garden of Eden has been provided and given to us believers. Somebody read toward the book of Revelation chapter 12. And let's take verse 11. And I want you to see that as a love letter from heaven to you tonight. It is God speaking to you as a person. God who knows what you are going through, who knows your crisis, your pain, your grief, your prayer, your desire. He has a word for you. Read, sir. And they overcame him. Raise your hand and say, I shall overcome all enemies by the blood of Jesus. That's, that's all. Can you move this fine away from me? God had made Adam 
I made him a king and placed him in a garden. By his death on the cross of Calvary and his resurrection, you have been given the key to return to the Garden of Eden, where you'll be a king, a ruler of your circumstances. The problems of your life shall not become answerable to you. It's also a garden of fulfillment. You were created on purpose for a purpose. And tonight I demand that the purpose for which you were created must be fulfilled. It's also <clears throat> a garden of mysteries. And life itself is a mystery. It is also a place of strength. When I speak of strength, I speak of that inner encouragement we all receive from God. Inner encouragement. That says to you, fear not, for I am with you. When they asked Daniel to step into the lion's den, he must have heard a voice that said to him, fear not. I don't know what you're facing. In 1973, policemen stopped me along a calm road. And they said, hey, give us your particulars. I showed them my particulars and them. Um, my papers had expired. And I said to them, by the law of this land, I'm allowed seven days of grace. So you have no right to impound my documents. They said, okay, you want to show us you know too much. Tomorrow, you must appear at court two, Calabar, or else we'll lock you up. My heart! My heart began to pattern and began to flog me. Hot blood rushed to my face. I became frightened. That was my first encounter with the police. And God said to me, fear not. I rule everywhere. I rule even in hell. I rule, I rule amongst men. The heart of every man is in my hand. Came back to you. By 5.30, I was already on my way to Calabar to avoid being disgraced. As I drove into Calabar, who did I meet? The Deputy Commissioner of Police. He recognized me and shouted, Reverend, what are you doing in Calabar this early? Well, I am under threat. Your boys have threatened to lock me up if I fail to show up. I had just finished a crusade for the Kwaibo Church along White House Street, Calabar. So people in Calabar knew me. And the man asked me, don't they know you? I said, sir, I don't know. He said, come on, let's go together. If they want to detain you, they'll detain us together. If they plan to insult you, they'll insult us together. Let's go. Can I imagine how I felt? To me, heaven came down. And that this night, the same heaven shall come down to you where you are. When we arrived at the police station, they were having their morning parade. When they saw him, they shouted, Attention! Salute! And the man said to them, Don't salute me. Who threatened to lock up this man. Everybody was quiet. This God you serve shall intimidate your enemies. And he asked me, do you, do you remember, do you recognize? I said, yes, I, I remember 
I recognize a man. See him here. And the man says, since I was born, I've never seen you. <laughs> I don't know if you know when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, he was a man of great strength. Do you know there was no sickness there? All the animals created by God, none could bite, none could harm, none could kill. And the deputy commissioner of police said to the man, can you kneel down and apologize to him? How many of you know that men who stand before God shall, no, men who kneel down before God shall stand before any enemy? No, you didn't hear me. Men who kneel down before God every day shall stand before any enemy doesn't matter who and God will dwarf your enemies for you the garden of Eden was a place of dominion and I want to say this night as many of you as are ready to learn the blessings of Calvary we are going to have dominion over all enemies of yours and I'm going to add that voice that speaks against you in your dreams in your businesses in your health in your marriage in your family that voice will speak no more remember I talked a few weeks ago that when Adam sinned, heaven described his life as a life of thorns, a life of pistols, a life of hardship and sweating. But when they wield a thorn as a crown, they were lifting that other crown out of the way. I don't know whether you remember what I said last week. We still, I, I have not allowed the wonder of that, that second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Can someone read it to us? It's, it's an awesome Bible line. That God has made available to all of us. He divine power to meet you at every point of need. I don't know what your need is. Divine power has been made available to you. I don't care what anybody says about you. This God I preach rules everywhere. And therefore your enemies are only pretenders. <laughs> what did I say? They are pretenders. Number no. Number six, the Garden of Eden is a place of authority. God said, I have given you power above all the powers of what? The enemy. All I want you to do is to recognize who you are. That you may not run in the day of battle with your weapons. I understand there is this message sent to everywhere in Uyo that Boko Harams are in town. They are not in town. It's a lie. He didn't say amen. <laughs> Even if they are in town, they will look for you and not see you. They will not see you. They will not see you. By one prophet, God set Israel free from Egypt. By one prophet, he preserved. Everyone here, you are here under a prophetic covering. The God 
Garden of Eden was also a garden of health. I'm sure you know that sickness is a spirit. But tonight the spirit in the word of God shall confront the spirit behind your sickness. When power meets with power, the lesser power will bow to the greater power. Again, the Garden of Eden was a place I called a place of all blessings imaginable. All blessings what? Imaginable. Jesus knew the reward that would be awaiting him and we, his people. And willingly took the cross he knew the reward and the reward is everyone listening to me tonight there is a gateway to all imaginable blessings I don't know whether you know what prayer can do for you when I was a bachelor I used to pray father give me a teacher as a wife somebody who when I'm angry will not be angry your prayer can shape even who you will marry your prayer can determine what vehicle that will be in your garage your prayer can determine how long you live here on earth I was shocked to hear what do you call him so he, can. he said life starts at 80. And I said to God, how can this unbeliever say that? Mine will start at 90. <laughs> Every blessing imaginable. Right where you are this night. That 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 garden was a garden where you can have encounter with the living spirit of God in the presence of the living word of God in an atmosphere of business to do business with God I don't know whether you know if I call for prayer now you can have encounter with God you can discuss with him you can talk to him and you know he will listen to you. We serve a humble God. He is not too busy to hear you. He is not too big to hear you. And this night you have a privilege and a chance, an open door to have an encounter with him. And tell him your pain. And tell him what you are going through. Number, number what? I'm going to make a very important statement. I don't know how many of you know that Adam was divinely provided for. God provided all that he needed. And for finding time to be here tonight, if you will only become born again, and if you're already born again, you will be divinely provided for. <laughs> my, my cousin came back from Gabon with a brand new car. He saw me and said, did I hear you are now a preacher? I said, yes. And you have no car? I said, yes. He said, no, 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 no. My priest, my reverend father has a car. I'd rather trek than have you trek. Can you take my car? Let me trek. I am Mr. Nobody. And I said to him, no, we don't take gifts from unbelievers. He asked me, how much do you have? I said to him, I have 1,300 naira. He said, Ted, give me the money. I'll give you a receipt. You have bought the car. Are you still here? 
<laughs> Soon after, along as the Kiwe Road Aba, my wife and I were doing window shopping of cars. You know, when you have no money, you can look at cars and say, this one, and that one, oh God, this one. We were doing that window shopping when a man drove past and came back and asked me, are you Uma? I said, yes, sir. He said, last night God asked me to buy you a car. Me? What do you do? Are you an arm robber? He said, no, that God you preach is my God. I told him, I don't like gifts from people I do not know. Keep your, keep your money. And my wife said to him, don't listen to this man. I like the station wagon, that, pu- that Pujo station wagon. And I said to, and I said to the, the man, was, the man was excited, I was angry. I said, hey, hey, if you must buy that car, buy it in her name, not in my name. And he bought the car in her name. And then he asked me, can you preach in our church this weekend? I said, yes. After preaching, the same amount, the same amount, he, no, I gave him back the money later before he invited me to preach in their church. And after preaching, the same amount of money I gave him for the car, he gave it to me as an offering from the church. I didn't know how to say no. Right where you're sitting this night, you have destiny helpers that God will send your way to help you. Only, all of us must avoid the mistake of Gehazi. He allowed covetousness to drive him away from this garden of Eden. Gehazi could have succeeded Elisha as another great prophet, but for covetousness. And then heaven announced and said to him, the leprosy of Naaman shall now be part of your household. Leprosy will be in your kitchen, in your toilet, in your bedroom, everywhere you go. I don't know whether you also know that if only Samson had listened to his father, the champion of Israel could not have become a clown. How many of you know that Samson's father spoke to him only once, not more than once? Corrected him only. The question I have for you this night is who corrects you? Or do you just do as you like? You need the father. If you don't have your biological father alive, you need a substitute father. Somebody who can speak into your life and correct you. If you have a mentor, you also need that mentor to become your tormentor. Who corrects you? Many of us hate to be corrected. Can we see the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23? What does it say? It says, if I rebuke you, if I reprove you and you turn, if I correct you and I accept the correction, what will happen? Turn you at my reproof. If you turn at my reproof, behold, behold, I will pour out my spirit. I'll pour, unto you become a man of exploits, and I will make known my words unto you. You become a man of exploits. I will show you how to overcome all obstacles, and show you how to turn obstacles into miracles. I'll show you how to compel your circumstances to respond to you and speak to you. Your circumstances can, can be answerable to you and obey you. When in 1974, the American embassy would not give me visa. 
Because I didn't know how to get visa. I got an expired from I-20. I didn't know how to get visa. I, I, I did not what they call send off. Gave away my things. Say goodbye to everybody without a visa. When I got to the embassy, the visa officer said to me, you are going nowhere. Oh. I asked him, what are you talking about? I have done my send-off. I said, what is send-off? Hey, I said goodbye to everybody. I'm on my way to the United States of America. <laughs> he laughed. He said, that's why you crazy. It's not possible. I came back. I will not eat. I will not pray. I will not. I refused to preach for one month. I was crying every day. Locked myself up. At the end of one month of crying and weeping, I opened my door. And that was a letter under the door. Inviting me to speak in a world convention. Signed by a pastor, a senator, and a governor. Did I even know the meaning? I didn't know the meaning. I went to the embassy with the letter. They looked, looked at me and they said, Hey, you are too young to be the owner of this letter. They even added something worse. They said to me, You're a thief. You have stolen somebody's um, letter. A young man like you cannot be called to speak in a world convention. And God gave me heaven open and God gave me. The Bible says in your day of trial, God will give you wisdom. And God said to me, tell them, anointing is not by age, but by the grace of God. So I said to them, this is borrowed idea from heaven. Hallelujah. But do you know tonight, God will open your ear to borrow ideas from heaven. Yeah. When I said to them, anointing is not by age, it has nothing to do with age. It is by the grace of God. The same this officer said to me, my brother, you are right. Hallelujah. We'll give you B1, B2 visa. It is meant for big men. Yes, sir. I didn't know the meaning. I didn't know the meaning after, after 20 years. Ignorance is a terrible disease. This night, you must know the dividends of Calvary. Amen. By his blood, you are going to overcome. Amen. You are going to rule. Your circumstances. Can you raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody? It was a righteous man that drove Adam out of the Garden of Eden. And this night, whatever sin hides in your heart, confront it. Stop it before that sin stops you. I have said to us over and again, if you love God and obey God and save God, you become too dangerous for any enemy to handle. I don't care who the enemy is. When the federal government threatened to arrest me in 1985, I also threatened to dismantle their government. Uh, I conducted greater labor for Christ crusade and they said the money I spent must have been given to me by CIA. That I should be arrested. When they came for me, I had already left Nigeria on my way to smuggle bubbles into China. I was in Hong Kong when they told me and I sent word to them to say, hey, hey, hey. if you use your weapon of compulsion, I will use my spiritual weapon against you. Because when a God recognizes the concentrated, peculiar presence of God upon you, that gun will refuse to fire. Oh, you don't know that. <laughs> Every weapon fashioned against you can recognize the presence of God upon you. When I'm robber, I see you and they, and they notice the power of God upon you. They will bow to you. 
On our way from Mwana back to my village, I'm robbers blocked our way. My policeman jumped down and I said, hey, hey, don't jump down. This is not the battle for policemen. It's a battle being fought at a higher level. So I came out of my car and walked towards the armed robbers. One of them saw me and shouted, Dead Oma. I am a log. That is, Dead Oma, we didn't know you were the one. We are going to dismantle this roadblock. Promise you will not pray against us. Please, we need God's mercy. <laughs> A Ghanaian girl in our company asked me, Oh God, don't be angry. Do you have juju on you? And I said to her, my friend, I am the juju. Juju does not carry juju. Jesus says, I'll give you power. Can you raise your hand and say, I am a child of power. one more time. I'm a child of power. <laughs> you know, I'm in love with Elijah. They went to arrest him. And they were very gracious to him. They called him man of God. Thou man of God, come down. And the man said to him, if I be a man of God, let fire come from God's kitchen and make your wives widows. And your children fatherless. Okay? They have guns so though. He knew they had guns. Even guns can recognize the peculiar concentrated presence of God upon you. And I want to announce. I want to announce. I want to announce. That that presence of God upon you. Shall mock everything that mocks you. The Bible says by his blood they overcame. Because that blood takes us back to the garden of Eden. The garden of authority. The garden of dominion. The garden of promotion and lifting. The garden of prosperity and promotion. But the garden also of security. I told you how that Boko Haram dropped their gun, their bomb to kill Pastor Joe and myself. And the bomb refused to detonate in Gombe. And they called me to say, why didn't that bomb detonate? Can we come to you and have you explain to us why the bomb did not detonate? Right where you are. Madam, sit well. Don't revise sleep. Sit well. See you. Sit well. Sit well, you. Sit well. Don't invite sleep into this business. Right where you are this night, you can confront whatever confronts you. But I want everybody to sit well. Sit well. Sit well. When you lean like this, you say, sleep, I'm not one of them. Come and take me. And sleep will take you. Sit well. They said to Elijah, thou man of God, come down. You may look ordinary, but you are not. When Abimelech took Abraham's wife, you know he looked ordinary. But he was not ordinary. You are not an ordinary person. Jesus said, as many as have received me. Doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter your background. Doesn't matter who your parents are. He says, I'll give you what? Power. I'll give you power. But you raise your hand and shout hallelujah as somebody. I don't care who is confronting you. By the finished work of Calvary. I don't know if you know, every time you plead the blood of Jesus, you are activating the presence and the power of God into that situation. 
Therefore, every morning you wake up in the morning, just say, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. But the life of every man is the blood. Somebody read toward the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And will smite all the firstborn in the land. To smite of Egypt. all the firstborn of Egypt. Both man and beast. Both man and they beast. All the gods of Egypt. Yes. I will execute judgment. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be. Say it well. The blood shall be to shall you. Shall be to you of a token. Upon the houses where ye are. Can somebody say, and the blood shall be to me a token? When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will the pass over says, you. I will pass over you. If the blood of an animal could do that, then your blood, the blood of Jesus will do much more. Right where you are, this night there is already the blood of Jesus upon you and therefore the angel of destruction shall pass over you but if that angel has sat down in your house that angel is that angel of death and destruction is sitting at the wrong place she stand up and move away But I want you to probe your heart and search your heart and ask God. Uh, I, I was teaching the other day and God gave me an inspiration. When the Bible says, if those who are called by my name shall humble myself and seek my face, I will pardon them. Who are those who are called by his name? They are people that have tender conscience, sensitive conscience. Whose defensive mechanism has been broken. They don't defend themselves anymore. All they say is, God, whatever I have sinned, I am sorry. You know, when Prophet Nathan said to David, and there was a man who did this and this, he said, no, no, stop, 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 stop. I am that man. Madam, they have stopped you twice to stop sleeping. I'll make you stand up. And this cameraman will pick your picture. The whole world will know you come to church to sleep. Help yourself before I spoil your evening for you. Right where you are this night, God is looking for those with ten tender conscience. Those who have an amplifier in their conscience. A microphone in their conscience. Who do not defend themselves. When God spoke to Samuel and Samuel spoke to King Saul in chapter 15 of the book of First Samuel, instead of King Saul saying, I am sorry, he began to argue with God. Whereas David said to the prophet, I am the man I have sinned. Let heaven have mercy. And the same, uh, the same man of God said to him, you will not die again, but the child of your sin will die, but you, you will be spared. Can we turn to 1 Samuel chapter 15, let's take verse 20, 21, 22, 23. What does it say? And Saul said unto Samuel, And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice yes, of the Lord. Yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And I have done the way which the house sent I have me. Done way, I have done what God has me to and do. And I have brought Agag the king I have of brought Amalek, Agag the king. And of utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Yes. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and horses. He blamed the people, not himself. And the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. Yes. To yes. sacrifice unto the Lord thy yes. God in Gilgal. And, and Samuel said, Samuel said, had the Lord as great the delight Lord has in burnt offerings and bond offering as in obedience. Go on. Behold, Behold, to obey is better to than obey, sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. Than to, hack, to hearken than the fat of For rams. rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness is as iniquity 
is as sinful as idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the because word of the Lord. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he, he also, also have rejected thee from being king. This is why nobody should be sleeping now. Because your stubbornness can stop you from being who God wants you to be. I know of men who had promise as great preachers. But when they went into sin, they just failed. I know of young men that held great promise. We used to admire them and like them, but no. They allowed sin to have upper hand in their lives. But not only the sin, their refusal to say to God, I am sorry. I am sorry. And God said to King Saul, having refused to obey the word of God, he, God, has stopped you from being. Do you know God can stop you from being a successful person? Can we see chapter 16 of the book of First Samuel? I will take verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord. But the spirit of the Lord Saul, departed from King Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord. Now an him. evil spirit. From the Lord. A mad spirit came upon him. It, do you know there's a way you walk away from God, and you'll accept a crook as a husband to be. You'll accept a four one nine man as a husband to be. Yes. You know you can marry an arm robber. Because most all arm robbers are flashy. And they can spend money with ease. And they look handsome. And they, most girls want to marry handsome men. I'm not saying being handsome is bad. But allow God to... Marriage is a triangle. God is at one end of the angle... You and the man who want to marry at the other two ends of the angle. It is he who will bring you two together, not you. Why? Because all of us were limited in knowledge. That a man will die prematurely. Will you know him if you see him? No. That the man will go mental later in his life. Will you know? No. Only God knows. Only God knows. I know of a girl who was a great promise and she married a man who became she married a, she married into a family where in every generation one of them will have mental breakdown and she married one of them allow God to choose for you because we are, all of us were limited this night if there is any sin you need to confess confess it and said to God, I'm sorry. We had pastors meeting once. And one of the pastors was going, you no, know, had a wedding scheduled for that weekend. I don't know why God spoke to me and said, Hey, ask him, that girl, is she pregnant? So I asked him, Hey, old boy, we're about to join you to a girl. Is she pregnant? And he looked into my eyes, my eyes and asked me, what stupid question is that? And I said, it's a question that requires answer. Can I find an answer to that question? He said, you're finding my trouble. Well, that is not the right answer. Can we send for the girl? He said, you dare not. Why not? So we sent for the girl. She came. Hey, young girl, are you pregnant? And she asked me, hasn't he told you I'm already pregnant? <laughs> and the man said, now, the thing you were looking for, you have found it. No, that was the wrong reaction. The right reaction is, I'm sorry. The gate to the garden of Eden that was short has been made open by he who died for you. And therefore, whatever the garden of Eden has for you, I'm going to give you 10 minutes to go for that which 
No, before we do, do I have anybody here who wants to make peace with God? You want to have a relationship with God. You want to know Jesus personally and intimately and experientially and empirically and livingly and as a living reality. You want to come to a place in your life. You want to come to a place in your life where God will open your ears and you can hear him minister to you. The only blessing that wisdom has is to give you direction. But if your ears are closed, how will you receive direction from God? Men and brethren, God prospers by instruction. If your ears are closed, how will you hear the instruction? And the Bible says, and God spoke to Abraham. Abraham could hear because his ears were open. I'm looking for those who want to make peace with God tonight and say to God, open my ears. I want to know you personally. I want to know you intimately. I want to know you experientially. I want to know you as a living reality. I want to have a communication line with you. I want to know you as a man would know the back of his hand. Help me, dear Lord. Turn my weakness into strength and burden my tongue and purify my heart. Stop me from defending myself unnecessarily. That, my friend, was simply defending himself unnecessarily. Because the same day we had another man who raised his hand and said, Well, Reverend, you don't know my case, but I have a, a confession to make. Last night, my, fa- my mother-in-law died and they sent my wife to be to spend the night with me and we committed fornication. The young man fell on the ground and began to roll and cry and weep and said to us, I would like to kill myself. I am a disgrace. I am a letdown. I want this life to end. Ask God to take my life. He wept so hard that we called him up and said, hey, stand up, you are forgiven. You are restored back to fellowship. The same day. Same day. Stop defending yourself when you have no reason to de- defend yourself. Just join David to say, I have sinned. When God asks Adam, where are you? All he needed to say was, Father, I have sinned. He said to God, Oh God, God, now you cause you trouble. I day where I day bring this woman and I put me inside trouble. That was not the right thing to say. This night, do I have anybody who wants to have a good relationship, a healthy, robust relationship with God? You want him to show you how to walk back to the Garden of Eden and occupy the place that Adam left and become what God, what God had intended Adam to be in the Garden of Eden. In that Garden of Eden, there is gold deposit for you. There is also a river for you. There is also a garden for you. All those who want to have that relationship with God, can you raise up your hand? Raise your hand very well. Let me see. Raise your hand very well. Raise your hand. Can you come out here? I want to pray for you. Come quickly, come quickly. And if you have a girlfriend, sack her this night. Tell her something happened in this meeting. You don't want a girlfriend anymore. No more boyfriend. You want to serve God. You want to live for him. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus.
Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. There are, there are 20 people here tonight who were on fire for Jesus. They have lost their zeal and their fire and their commitment and their dedication and their consecration. If you're here in that audience and you're sitting down, can you quickly stand up and join these people now? Stand up. You used to be on fire for Jesus. You could fast in those days. You could speak in tongues. You could even prophesy, but now you don't do any of those things again. The presence of God has left you. Can you come out and get reconnected to that presence of God? Come quickly, we don't have time. Raise your hand, every one of you. Repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus. I have taken a decision tonight to follow you at all costs, at any time, at any place. Come into my heart as my Lord, my Redeemer, my King. I shall obey you all the days of my life. Therefore, invest your spirit and power in me. And turn my weakness into strength. Help me, dear Lord, to live for you. Grant me revelational knowledge of your word. Open my ears to hear your voice. Every voice that speaks against me. Father, stop that voice from speaking to me again. Put your mark upon my forehead. Grant me the joy of salvation. The glory of salvation. For I ask in Jesus' name. Can the, can the saints say amen? amen? Father, everyone who has stepped out this night, can you prepare him or her for greatness? May they start their walk with you. Open their ears to hear your voice. Plant a hunger in the heart to know you, to study your word. Every morning, may they start with you. May they have an encounter with the living word of God in the presence of the living spirit of God in an atmosphere of business to do business with you. Beginning this night, may it be well with them. Father, take them away from any sickness that can lead to premature death. Every covenant entered into by anybody on their behalf is now cancelled. Only your covenant shall rule over them. So it shall be. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Congratulations. There's a form I want you to fill. Tomorrow, let's give them a good clap offering, please. Tomorrow, you must be here for special training and teaching. You must come by 5 p.m. God bless you. Can we all now stand up? Everybody, we're going to take our prayer first before the communion. Can you stand up? If you were to meet Jesus this night, what would be your request? Paul will ask him, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Can we all say to God, pass me not. Oh, gentle Savior, 
Yeah, my humble cry. Why on others thou art called? Only Jesus do not pass me by. Savior, 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 yeah, my humble cry. Why on others thou art calling? Do not, not pass me by. Everybody take good five minutes. You can do what I call walking prayer. You can step away from where you are. Tell God what you want him. Very soon we shall have the Holy Communion. Tell him to help you enjoy the dividends of Calvary. Tell him. Can we all pray? Everybody, take five minutes. This blood is your own Passover blood. This night is your Passover night. Open your mouth and talk to God and tell him what you want him to do for you. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Father, beginning tonight, when your people see the arrows of the wicked, and when they hear the bullets of the wicked, may this blood become their stronghold. May it become their shelter, Amen. their bunker. Amen. And Lord, no harm come to them anymore. Amen. Father, 
You said when the angel of destruction and sickness and death shall come, if he sees the blood, he will pass over your people. And therefore this night is no longer an ordinary night. May this blood be seen upon everyone who is part of our service tonight. And therefore the angel of poverty, of sickness, of affliction, of struggle, of failure is now commanded to pass over your people. <laughs> Father, as they drink of your blood tonight and as they eat of your flesh tonight, whatever they are looking for shall not come looking for them. Father, every morning they wake up, compel them to cover themselves with the blood of Jesus. When they run into any battle of life, then they command the blood of Jesus to cover them. I therefore declare everyone here tonight a child of power, a child of victory. An overcomer. Amen. In every battle you will ever fight. By my spoken word tonight. You are going to have supernatural commanding victory. Amen. Father even the youngest amongst us. Even the workers help this person. Where are our people? Please help, help. Put her down somewhere. Awesome God. It shall be to you a token, an evidence of his peculiar concentrated presence. By this communion tonight, you have become part of Abraham's seed. And because you are Abraham's seed, nobody shall defeat you. No enemy shall defeat you. Amen. That gate of Eden is open. It's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. Whatever the enemy took from your family, from you, from your business, from your health, shall not be returned. Be returned. Be returned. Be returned. Be returned. Be returned. <laughs> On that night, Father, the Master Jesus took bread and said, Eat, for this is my body that is given for you and to you. And therefore, as we eat this night of your flesh, everyone shall enjoy and experience and possess the dividends of Calvary. <laughs> On that night, you gave them drink, wine, and said, drink for this is my blood. Tonight, we drink of that which was shed because of us that the thorns may be lifted that we may re-enter the garden of Eden and let that journey start this night in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Father I dedicate every Holy Communion element to you and declare that none shall be an ordinary bread, ordinary wine. Your peculiar concentrated presence shall rest upon these two elements. And as your people eat, they shall come to a new place. A new victory. And they shall overcome all obstacles. They will enjoy a life of increase and health. And authority and power and dominion. 
at their appearance. Every door the enemy has shut shall open, shall open, shall open, shall open, shall open. I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke barrenness. I rebuke failure. I rebuke defeat. I rebuke premature death. Awesome God. Everyone who was caused by anybody, that cross is now annulled. By my spoken word tonight, every juju prepared against you shall have no power. By my spoken word tonight, you have become too dangerous for any enemy to handle, to handle, to handle, to handle, to handle, to handle, to handle. If in your dreams your enemies look for you, they will not find you. Father, every weapon of compulsion and the appearance of your children shall not function again. Finally, everyone who is part of our service tonight, whatever the enemy stop to your parents, he will not stop you there. All those who have come with their own personal cup, raise it up. I want to consecrate your cup. I want to bless your cup. Why I get ready to to sing unto God? You have your cup, My, hey. My friend, that cup is too big. Look at this man. Put it down. Next time you bring a smaller one. Why don't you bring a bucket? <laughs> you too, my friend. Put all those with, with uh, cup size, I mean bucket size cups. Put it down. Your own is too big to put it down. Why can't you find a cup as beautiful as this? Something that is not breakable. Okay? That your own can break easily. Huh? It will not break. Says who? Promise me. Okay, have you seen God speaking to you? Or if you have your own, if your own is big, promise me you will replace it. How many of you will replace your own when you go home? Next communion service come with something of average size. I hope you will not come here one day with a bucket. Father, I ask that your presence will rest upon every cup brought here by anybody. And that your presence shall mock everything that will ever think of mocking them. I dedicate each cup. No voice shall speak from those cups. Only the voice of Calvary shall speak. The voice that says it is finished. I therefore dedicate each cup in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. your communion can you stand up and raise up your right hand and repeat after me and say 
By his blood I shall increase. By his blood I will overtake every enemy of mine. Whatever the enemy had taken from me shall be returned tonight. By his blood I shall be more than a conqueror. When the angel of destruction shall see the blood of Jesus upon me, he will pass over me. I will not live like an ordinary person, nor will I die like an ordinary person. I shall live an extraordinary life. Heaven shall grant me prophetic, insightful, revelational knowledge of the word of God. And I shall begin to operate at a higher level than ordinary. It shall be well with me everywhere I go. Diseases that can bring premature death have not come my way. Demons that stopped my parents shall not stop me. I declare I am now unstoppable. By his blood. The presence of God and the shaft of the king shall always be in my house. An angel has been appointed to follow me as I walk through life. And that angel, that angel shall fight all my battles. So it shall be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah.